You're listening to the 40 Fit Radio Podcast, dedicated to the 40-plus community. Join us as we discuss the truth about fitness and health using science, reason, and the experiences of our host and content experts. Welcome to the 40 Fit Nation. So, hey, so welcome back to the 40 Fit uh, Radio Podcast, and welcome back to the 40 Fit Nation. I'm Coach D, and I've got Trent with me here this morning. Hey, guys, how you all doing? Good morning. We're going to talk today about, uh, this is one of our short series podcasts, and it's going to be, I'm too dot, dot, dot to train. And I got thinking about this because uh, we were talking on a, a social media app called Slack with some of the other starting strength coaches the other day, and one of them had a client that was in his 50s. And he was just starting with his program. He had just done his demo workout or his test workout. And he was kind of rolling forward with it. And basically, this guy, is he's a firefighter um, by uh, profession. And and he just has a lot of issues physically. He's got some some tightness. um, He's got some previous injuries. And he was just very frustrated because he potentially sees that he might not be able to train because of those issues. So this podcast is developed, is dedicated to those folks that are out there, that are listening audience, which at one point in time was us too, most likely. It's probably everyone, most likely, who basically has decided I'm too dot, dot, dot to train. So what are some of the reasons that you can think of, Trent, that are excuses that people might use um, to start a fitness program, to start strength training. This might be the biggest one. I'm certainly guilty of it before. You know, when you coach me as an online client, uh, I had trouble with consistency and uh, it's because I was dot, 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 too busy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Too busy. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, at the time I was working a lot of hours. Uh, I worked, I used to work in finance when I worked a corporate job and uh, those are long hours especially when you're at the end of the quarter, the end of the year, but yeah, you certain timelines and restrictions and looking back now with some perspective on that job, two things. Number one, it's a matter of priority. Yeah. And I think for the vast absolutely. majority of people that, that claim that they're too busy, it's just that they haven't prioritized it. Right. Um, you know, it might be, and I had to do this for a while. It might be, you just need to get up at 5 AM and crank it out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sure. It, sure. It, it does. It suck. Yeah, it yeah. does. How it, important it does. is it to you, basically? How you know right. how important is but it? But if you? it's if it's important, prioritize it. Make it first in your day. Then if you've got a long day and you get home from the office at eight o'clock, yeah, it's you know, not going to happen. You hit dinner. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not going to happen after that. You're mentally worn down. Yeah. So give yeah. yourself the chance to succeed. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing too is that with with some perspective on my personal situation. Um, I was working hard, but I wasn't working efficiently. Yeah, sure, sure. I put in a lot of hours. My output didn't correspond with the hours that I put in. And so, you know, that's a longer term project. Yeah, um, That's sure. not something I'm really good at, but I've been able to improve. Yeah, efficiency and work and all those things. I, yeah. I've been able to improve greatly. And that's that really impacts my training life. Sure. You know, if I can be more efficient, have a higher output, less amount of hours, well then, I mean, it's obvious I've got more time to train. Yeah. Yeah. I find that that, that's generally, uh, number one, that excuse, um, because it is an excuse generally, um, but that excuse is is basically a classical excuse for failure mentality. It really is because because that applies to a lot of different things in life. I always say, if you want to get a job done, give it to a busy person. Give it to a person that's already crazy busy yeah. because they generally get things done. That's why they're crazy busy. Exactly. And so, and I'm not just talking about perceptual busyness. I'm talking about actual busyness, work productivity, the amount of work that they produce, so forth and so on. And so, um, you know, it's funny. I'll have people all the time. You, you know what my schedule's like. Um, uh, it's it's a little crazy between You're like them. already checking your phone. Like ah, I gotta be in. Yeah, a between in about the, ten minutes. Yeah, yeah I do today. <laughs> I gotta go. Podcast. I gotta. Yeah, we're st- <laughs> we're starting the second podcast today, and so you know, I mean, it's it's just one of those things that you just you got to make it priority. You know, it's an excuse, um, and it, it's a way for us to um, uh, deny self responsibility. Um, and I get it that, that we're all busy at differing levels, but when it becomes important enough to you to do it, you're going to do it. And that's going to apply to everything we're going to talk about in this podcast today. Today, you know, I think the second reason probably for our population is that, especially when it comes to barbell training and classical strength training, and that is I'm too old 
to mm. train. You know, this is this is really outside of my age range or or um, and what I find a lot of times is is that the older population, let's say the 40 plus, and probably more importantly and more accurately the 50 plus population. For so many people, um, strength training, exercise, going to the gym has really just not been part of their cultural mindset. Um, especially the much older population, 50 and 60 and above. Yeah, so the it early just, baby boomers. Yeah, not yeah. Not really just, a thing that was popular. No, no, and it, it, it wasn't seen as being necessary. Their lifestyles were fairly active. Um, you know, they, they, they didn't eat out as much. Just the whole quality of life was probably a little bit better right. in regards to health factors. Um, you know, they ate more home, you know, home cooked meals. They, they had more active jobs. There was, was less reliance on automation and convenience. And you take all those things into effect. And I mean, if you were farming, farming and you were a farmer, um, man, you, your day was so long with work that oh, at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. there was no, there really was no time. Yeah, I can to think exercise, about, you know, my dad you know? picked cotton until he yeah. was 11 or 12. Yeah. 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 I mean, and so, so, but that, that whole concept of being too old, and I'll just tell you, Man, if you're older, this, you know, strength training definitely in its many forms and fashions is a must for you. It's it's not that you're too old for it. It's that your your mind is too old for it. Your biggest roadblock, your biggest stumbling block in all these excuses or all these reasons for not starting your fitness program. And what a great time to talk about this as we're entering into the new year. I hate New Year's resolutions. What I like is when people make commitments to set new habits. That's right. To drive new habits off of a desire or a readiness to change, a desire to change because of a perceived problem or a real problem, and then they move forward and do the things. They do the program, basically. That's right. That's right. So if you're thinking about your New Year's resolution right now in December. Yeah, yeah, man. Start it now. Yeah, exactly. Don't make it a New Year's yeah, resolution. Yeah, make get it a, run a this on year's it. resolution. Get a freaking run yeah, on it right. so you got two weeks in on Hit this the ground thing. running. Yeah, yeah. I, I, always, I always find it funny as an aside. Um, you know, when I used to train in public gyms, you would always see the same crowd every day. And then, yeah. then New Year's happens. Yeah, then January, you see all the newcomers. January, the second week of it's January. It's like Easter and church, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like Easter and Christmas and church. You know, the pews yeah, are packed. Yeah. And then, you know, by March... Yeah, back to well, the not same old March, crowd. Dude. Yeah, it's sometimes early. not even March. Yeah, but it's probably it, February. <laughs> by the end of February, it's the same old yeah. crowd. That's <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all about developing habits. You know, it's yeah, all about yeah. developing habits, and it's all about developing um, consistency. And it's and you know, like we talked about in an earlier podcast, I got sick recently, and I was uh, down for the count for almost a week and a half. I didn't train, and just getting back in is hard. I mean, yes, just yeah, inertia just, is a big deal. Yeah, I it's mean, just deal. getting started and moving again is hard, and. Um, and I think that, you know, for a lot of listeners out there, they're just thinking, um, especially I find this to be true, maybe in our, in our female population over 60, this is strength training with a barbell or strength training in general is just really not even in their wheelhouse. They just don't, they don't see it. And I have, we have a 65 year old client here in our gym. It's female. Yep. It's amazing to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. It's amazing to watch her. And she came in with a quote unquote bad back. And um, she deadlifted uh, 100 pounds for for a set of five the other day, and she's four weeks into her linear progression. She's pressing incredibly. She's squatting incredibly. And she doesn't have perfect health either or a perfect health history in her spine. And so, but that's a great example. If the, if the, if the, you know, uh, the whole, what's the whole statement? If the, if the reason's big enough, then the facts just don't matter. You know, if the, if the desire is big enough, then the facts, the quote unquote facts or the things that you think that are reality, it really just doesn't matter. Go for it, man. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, my, my wife who is a, a yoga instructor, she, she has a, one of her mentors says, um, you know, nothing's going to change until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying the same. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, pers- it's definitely a, uh, um, uh, the readiness to change, you know, right. when I, I deal with this every day with our patient population, when someone comes in and they have a big enough problem um, and it bothers them enough and it disrupts their lifestyle enough, then hopefully they'll take the steps that are needed to make a change. And even then, sometimes they don't. You know, sometimes yeah. the work, the like you said, developing inertia, developing the movement forward is just so hard to start with that my job as a, as a DPT and as a coach sometimes is to soften that blow a little bit up front right, right. so that I can help them realize that you don't have to 
you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, you don't have to take, uh, you don't have to eat this elephant all at once. Let's gradually chew this up bite by bite and, you know, start small. And are you going to the gym, uh, you know, three days a week? Are you, are you getting good quality coaching? Um, Are you doing the work? Um, Are you using proper nutrition, getting good sleep and build the basic habitual elements that need to be put into place to allow you to succeed, you know? That's right. Um, That's right. So you mentioned um, back there that uh, you were sick. Yeah. The other yeah. Day, right. Yeah. Well, I find flu, a lot of man. times flu that from hell. <laughs> being sick is an excuse to miss a workout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm yeah. too sick to train. And when I say sick, you know, there's different levels of sick. Yeah, I mean, I had 103 you had, fever for you a had couple a, days. Yeah, you had a, exactly. You had a <laughs> Train, high fever. I couldn't fever. even think. <laughs> you know, you're trying, to, you're trying to sit up is probably But I got a little bit of allergies. Or, but you got the cold, a little yeah, stomach, you know, Yeah, I got reflux. this, or I got... It, what you're really saying is, is that your training environment is not always perfect, and you're not That's always right. going to feel good to train. Do it anyway. Man, I've come in, and my back's been a little tweaked. My knees have been a little tweaked. And I just decided I was going to train anyway, and I got working set PRs. You know, I got I, you know, you know, great workouts and conditioning workouts or whatever it is. And so don't prejudge how you're going to perform. Just go in and perform. That's right. Uh, you That's know, right. don't prejudge the fact that you're not going to have a good workout. You're definitely setting yourself up for failure. You're not going to have a good workout if you think you're not going to have a good workout. Go in and say, you know what? I'm not at my best, but I'm going to give it my best work. I'm going to work as hard as I can, set under a little voluntary hardship, hardship and make it happen. And so That's right. um, another reason might be, um, I, I find this sometimes gender wise, it can be a problem. You know, if, if, you know, if you're a woman and you think that strength training, you know, in a gym like what we have, that it might, it's too masculine or mm, it's, this yeah. is for guys, you know? Sure. Uh, but, but. Our population here at our gym is over 50% female, right? at least, you know, so, um, and they're all strength training. And most of those females are over 40 years old and into their 50s That's right. and 60s. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, again, a preconceived notion or a potential excuse, all of these basically are excuses to not get started. That's right. I mean, let's That's face right. it. They're all excuses to not get started. Yeah. You know, um, we've talked about this before offline, one of the most common complaints or uh, one of the most common misgivings about strength training that you hear from women is I don't want to get bulky. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I often Man, I'm wonder a like the female green Hulk. That, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, first of all, I'm sure that the women who do strength train would love if they could get bulky, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A little <laughs> They're like, stronger, a little like, bit more upper where's body all the bulk mass. at, you know, it's right, a, right. Uh, but, good hard bulk. <laughs> that's right. But, but I, sometimes I wonder if that's, uh, if that statement is really, is, what it's a proxy for, I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of change. Yeah. yeah. I'm afraid of breaking this inertia I have to, to do something. I, I, th- I think nine times out of 10, all of these excuses are a lack of self responsibility in format yeah. at some form or fashion. You know, it's just a lack of self responsibility. And I don't mean that in a hard way to say that I'm, I am perfect in everything that I endeavor to do also, either. But I think it's just a lack of self responsibility. And I think we got to get rid of that um, ho- habit in our life, because then that rolls over not only outside your fitness, but it can roll over into your job or, you know, I'm to this to do this, or I'm, I'm to this, you know, I'm not smart enough or I'm not, I'm not pretty enough or right. I'm not, you know, young enough. Well, they passed me over because I'm an older guy, you know, yeah. and there may be some truth to that matter, but at the same time, okay, fine. Um, change your environment, change the elements you have. You're, you're a master of your own destiny, control the elements that you can and forget about the other things that you can't control and then just move forward. I find that the habits of successful strength training, you know, the habits of a successful phys- fitness program will overflow into many other areas of your life. And those successful habits are very similar from person to person to person. There is no secret element. There is no best self-help book. It's when you look at successful people and whatever they do, um, you know, I've had people say, wow, you've been pretty successful in strength training after, after surgeries, back surgeries and shoulder surgeries and all these different things. I say, well, when really the key there is, is I've just applied the same habits than I learned in my professional career or when I was a gymnast, competitive gymnast. That's right. Or yeah. in my personal life or whatever it is. And definitely not perfect in any of those areas, but 
those habits are similar from environment to environment to environment. And so one of those habit, habits that's a bad habit is a lack of self-responsibility. And, and just saying, you know, another one might be something like this. You know, I'm too injured to train or yeah, I've got yeah. too many health problems to train. Man, if you've got right. health problems, you have to train. That's right. Everybody You're the knows perfect that guy. population. Everybody knows that guy that, that you know, complains, oh, man, I, I, I can't squat. I, I hurt my back. Yeah, know? I'm the and bad was, back guy, And man. then the story was, you know, 15 years ago. Or I got bad knees, back out. man. Yeah. I got bad knees, man. Or I got <laughs> bad ankles. And, That's right. Well, you know, all the data is pretty clear. If you'll strength train and if you'll do it with the right type of movements and if you'll keep a simple program and just follow linear progression, your performance is going to improve, your function is going to improve, your pain is going to decrease, and your quality of life is going to get better. Your ability to perform activities of daily living is going to get better. Now, are we going to get rid of your pain? Are we going to get rid of your problems? Are we going to get rid of your of some of the issues? Most likely not, but it will get better. And right. that's the thing. Your option is, is that doing nothing means it's not going to improve at all. In fact, it's going to decline over time. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, I think that's another reason is that people just think they're too injured and they, they right. or they, they have too many health problems. And, and how many cool stories have we seen oh, in, in the starting strength world um, or on the starting strength channel about people who have had um, profound injuries yeah, yeah. that have come back. Yeah, traumatic, multiple not, fractures. Not only come back, but, but been stronger cancer. than they've ever been in their life. Yeah. yeah. You know, right now. Uh, John Wilson. Yeah, is, uh, that's a perfect. Great example. guy. He's yeah. he's 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 always uh, usually running the platform whenever they host yeah. uh, strength meets at Wichita Falls Athletic Club. Yeah, John Wilson's been living yeah. with stage four cancer for yeah two years. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, he wasn't supposed to live. I think they said know. six months or something like that was his yeah. prognosis. It was it was a really short prognosis. Right. Exactly. And you know what? He just keeps training. And he's not a spring effort. chicken. Yeah. No, you know, he's no. an older guy, and you know, I mean, so he. You know, he's he's submitting that cancer to more muscle mass goes a long way, man. It That's helps. Right. helps. I love I love so so at Wichita if y'all ever get a chance to go to Wichita Falls Athletic Club, on one wall there is a, a PR board, a whiteboard with PRs on it. And John Wilson's there at the bottom. <laughs> and you know, so everybody's PR, Chase Lindley, squat. I don't know, you know eight, 8 thousand pounds, <laughs> you know, deadlift nine thousand. Yeah, yeah. And then at the bottom, we've got John Wilson, and under each lift, it just says alive. Yeah, alive, exactly. Alive. It's great. Though, I love but that. I, I, I think we could probably find a hundred different instances of yeah, clients dozens of, of people stories we like know that, that um, you know, I've had I had a total knee replacement patient who who's in his mid to late sixties who strength trains in his garage now because we started him on a barbell program and, and you know. Person after person after person um, who is basically, in, instead of using that as an excuse not to train, they use that as a reason to train. Right, and right. I think that that's key. And so. so let's, uh, before we wrap this up, let's talk a little bit about willpower. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, hey... I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor, but yeah. I stayed at a Holiday Inn. Yeah, thanks. Like two years ago. <laughs> All right, cool. um, I'm not sure what that means, but I think, I think, since, since we're looking at the, we're staring down the new year, and New Year's resolutions are going to happen, and then they're not going to happen about two months later. Um, one of the things that I've learned in my own journey, strength training, and strength training in particular, because I've, I've trained in a lot of different modalities sure. in the past. I've done endurance training. I've, I've run half marathons and, and trained for that. But one thing about strength training in particular um, has taught me the value of little goals. And when I say little, yeah, I mean absolutely. really little because let's get one thing straight. If you're not training and you don't live a healthy lifestyle right now, going from that to having a health, healthy sure. lifestyle, it's not easy. In no, fact, it sucks. No. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the whole point of this is that right now your brain, your brain chemistry is adapted to pleasure, right? And you're always seeking that out in your life. It's a, it's an evolutionary thing, right? And so you're adapted to wanting to sit on the couch and eat some bonbons or Cheetos or whatever sure. your thing is, sure. right? And so the act of, just the act of not having that. Yeah. That sucks. It's it it creates suffering, right? Self denial. It's self denial, I mean, self -denial right? Voluntary hardship. Much less deal. tacking yeah. on yeah. doing some uh, some actual physical activity on top of that. So it's really tough to train you around. I don't think you can white knuckle your way through this. Right. It's not going to be fun. Everybody it's not tries. Be fun. Everybody yeah. tries every single year, yeah. and they and and almost all of them fail. And so how do you how do you start? Well, I think the value of small goals. Yeah, is absolutely. Where you start. And when I mean small goals, I mean let me let's let's get under the bar. Let's do a set of five. 
Yep. Just the bar, right? How yep. easy is that? To do air squats, right? Start warming up. And I sometimes I have to do this with myself on a really tough day, even now. Oh, let me just warm up. Yeah. Let me just yeah, warm man. Up. Let yeah. me just squat, you know, I just squat some warm up sets today. Okay, I start warming up. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, I'm feeling better about this, sure, right? Sure. I can go a little bit further. I can yeah. do one more, right? And um, I find with strength training, one of the beauty, beautiful things about it is that you've got a very small goal today. And if you just get in the gym and do it, now you've uh, now you've set a goal. I'm going to squat this weight. Yep. You've done it and you've accomplished a goal. Bam. It's done with. It's not a month from now. Yeah, stop thinking about now. the week. Stop thinking about the weeks. Stop That's thinking right. about the month. Start thinking. First of all, start a setting aside a little time in your schedule to do these things. That's right. And you know what? I think this opens us up to a great another podcast before the new year. And that is goal setting for 2019. Yeah. You know, yeah. how to best set these goals and how to set yourself up for success, developing accountability, setting smart goals, like we've talked about in prior podcasts, you know, things that are specific and measurable and actionable and all these different things. And then creating accountability around you. Um, I, and that's again, why we talk about the value of coaching. We can't, you know, anybody that's in a professional field, yeah. um, a licensed professional field, realize the value you of an expert because it can, you know, we have a doctor we train here and, and an engineer, they're buddies. And they came in and did, they do remote training with us. And they came in this last weekend. And one of the guys said, man, the doctor who's a spine fellowship trained ankle and foot surgeon said, man, I wish I would hired you guys when I started. I would right. save, I would be so much farther along and save so much more time. Right. Luckily he found us. And so, but at the same time, you know, um, I think that, um, we need to we need to do a podcast on just how do we get started with this thing? How do we move forward for the new year and make sure that we that this isn't just a flash in a pan and this is something we can do for the future. That's right. That's right. So that I think that's uh, one of the lessons here is that when you think you are too dot 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 whatever yep. to train, bring it back to the present moment. Stop looking out way into the future. Stop, Stop looking, looking at, at what the problem happened yesterday. Stop looking this at morning. your problem, your issue. It's right now. Yep. You can absolutely. go and do something right now. Yeah, so. I mean, I think that's great advice, Trent. So, man, guys, thanks for joining us on the 40 Fit Radio podcast and thanks for joining the 40 Fit Nation. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at the 40 Fit Masters Community Group. You can find us on Instagram at 40 Fit Radio. You can find Trent at Marmalade Cream, myself at DL Deaton, or you can go to 40fit.com and go to the 40 Fit Radio tab and find episodes there and also hook up with us there via email. Man, it's been great having you guys, and you're never to dot, dot, dot to start your program today.